and welcome to our Spotlight videos where we discuss cutting edge employment law issues in the news. I'm Tom Spiegel, founder of the Spiegel Law Firm, a firm that helps people who've been fired or afraid they might be. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by an attorney in my office, Zachary Amon. He is, uh, he's going to be talking to us today about uh, the, some, some craziness that went on in the soccer world. So I'll let you, I'll let you lead off, Zachary. Yeah, thanks, Tom. So uh, I, I'm sure you're aware, as many people who watch soccer have been following the story. Uh, the Women's World Cup was earlier this year. Uh, the Spanish team won over the English team. Uh, but that was kind of overshadowed by what happened after uh, the game. So um, the Sp Spain's uh, top brass uh, was on the, on the pitch to help uh, congratulate each of the players. Um, he ended up forcibly kissing one of the players, um, you know, like held her face and like kissed her right on the mouth. And um, obviously it caused a big uproar. Um, it's a global stage and this happens. And then, it, you know, after that happened, uh, it came out that he had done some other things just in that, in during the game alone, uh, making some, some obscene gestures during the game. And then, um, a lot of very forcible hugging for some other players, so it seems like a pattern. Um, it turned out that the the player that he kissed came out and said, "Like I didn't agree to this; it was not consensual." Uh, and rather than just apologize or try to make it, you know, try to try to, to make amends, uh, he was pretty defiant on it was completely consensual. We were both, uh, you know, very excited. Uh, it got caught up in the moment, uh, that kind of thing. So um, naturally, it did not go well for him. Uh, a lot of people called for his job and he remained pretty defiant saying, I'm, I'm not resigning, I'm not resigning. Uh, eventually, um, his everyone from, his, his, um, from the coaching staff quit, except for the coach. Uh, who had some some issues of his own, uh, mm -hmm. and then the the players came out in solidarity and said, "We're not we're not playing um, for the country unless something changes." Uh, eventually, he was uh, suspended while they pending an investigation, uh, and then just most recently, he's actually been he was fired from the Spanish job, but then he's been suspended by FIFA, uh, the organization that governs international play. For, for three years, so it's it's had a lot of repercussions for him. He's still there's still um, prosecution ongoing, uh, an investigation to see if charges should be brought under Spanish law and internet some international law as well. So um, not not a good for <laughs> for Mr. Rubiales there. Yeah, not not a good luck. No, I think it's a fascinating uh, fascinating phenomenon. Uh, I mean, I mean, a couple of things. I mean, first, I mean. If you were in a traditional employer-employee relationship, like if your boss at a happy hour, like, "Hey, we hit our Q3 numbers," and then grabs you by the face and kisses you, um, that is um, is uh, is almost certainly uh, actionable um, sexual harassment as well as probably assault and battery if you wanted to to bring those charges. Right. So let's be clear, like it, it, you know. This guy, I think, got a lot more. Uh, I mean, he used the rope to hang himself, but he got a lot more rope because I think it was, you know, high profile and he, you know, was this kind of a high-level figure. But, but you're right. And it's also interesting that it that it really sort of followed the same pattern that we've seen in the United States with sort of the Me Too movement. You know, sort of the more high-profile cases where there's initial denial. You know, um, there are some people that come, you know, come to back up the bad actor and then eventually the drumbeat of uh exposure forces them to you know to to make amends or to resign or you know go to jail in some cases so uh, it was interesting to see it and um it happen in another context you and i were talking before we started recording that we were, we you and i saw it and we were like oh well maybe Maybe in Spain, they're just more demonstrative and this is, you know, they're different than the U.S., but but no, it, it followed very much a very similar pattern as you just um, as you just uh, very ably laid out. Yeah, and I think the other interesting thing is is the number of avenues um, to pursue that type of action. I mean, here, you know, we had 
Um, the Spanish government get involved. We had the the Spanish Federation, so the the organization that governs just the Spanish teams. You have FIFA, the international organization. Then you have the Court of Public Opinion, where everybody's got an opinion on on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now. <laughs> and、um, and then from there, you know, you have boycotts or strikes or 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 something like that. So there's a lot of different avenues.、Um, To get the point across, and I think that's kind of similar here、uh, in the U.S. As far as some of the cases that we take on, you know, we we try to send a demand letter and settle it outside of court. Obviously, there's going to court, there's going to the EEOC, and having those types of investigations. So a lot of different ways to achieve a result,、um, depending on what the overall goal is for the client. No, absolutely. No, I think that's、uh, those are all excellent points. Well, thanks for for bringing、uh, this brief spotlight to our attention. It's a great story.、Uh, appreciate you taking the time, Zach. I'll let you get back to the next thing on your desk. There. All right, sounds good. Thanks. I appreciate it. Take care.